and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am going to be painting these mugs. Um, if you've been on, around my channel for a while you'll have seen me do this before. Um, these four are to be a set and they're commissioned for a dear friend of mine and um, so I am <laughs> oh, um, I'm not the biggest fan of commissions to be honest. <laughs> I'm just creating and but she did pick um, one that I'd done before and it was the purpley bluey pinky one and so we're going to the target is to emulate something similar onto these mugs. Um, first thing that you always need to do when you are using mugs, especially if they are brand spanking new like these, is to wipe them down with isopropyl alcohol. There is always oils and um, manufacturing gunk on brand new stuff. So just like you would wash new garments if you bought them. You need to clean these down. And using isopropyl alcohol will take off the sticky, oily finger marks and stuff like that. So that's always the first thing I do. Um, second thing I'm going to do is lift them up off the ground, just like we do with a canvas. Because um, there's going to be paint drop off the bottom. That's a given, especially when painting a 3D object of any description. So all I've got is, this is a paint tube lid, um, see look, paint tube, um, and I've got some blue tack, uh, this is the one I use, it's standard New Zealand Bostick, uh, and it's just poster putty, you know, stuff that you stick your posters up on the wall and then can take your posters down off. So I just use that just to hold that up, create a little stand so that the paint can drip off the bottom. Now, um, that's I have already pre-wiped all those, so you guys will have to put up with watching me do that. So what colours am I using? She said she liked the purpley blue one, and so... I went to get some of the same colours and they didn't have exactly the same colours. So we have got a slight variation, <laughs> but they're pretty much the same. They're still red and blue. Um, so this one is Ruby Red. Uh, it, for those of you that are new to this, where's one without a sticker? This is Porcelain, Pabos Porcelain 150. Uh, I've got a whole heap, I've got a whole... Um, playlist of me using this stuff um, on other mugs so you can check that out on my channel um, so I'm going to be using the ruby red the sapphire blue so we're going gemstone-ish ivory and I'm going to put in just an incy wincy wincy little bit of anthracite black again stony type thing and I'm still tossing up with it to put in a little bit of this pewter um, it dries a bit weird and I'm thinking probably not so it's just going to be those four colors let me just lift those up so you can see them and or maybe I'll tilt you down so you can see them <laughs> I have got this on a lazy susan now the value of a lazy susan is when you're pouring you can just turn it around and around and around and around and around and around and, around and get to them all so the very important thing is to not have them all sitting up here otherwise you won't be able to get to them all and when i pour these mugs what i do is i don't pour the handles i have done in the past um but the one she liked doesn't she didn't didn't have the handles poured so that is my plan for today which will also allow me just to lift that off 
put it over there and do the next one um, without getting in the way. So let's move that out of the way for a start off. What I am going to try and do, <laughs> the cool thing is it does come off in the dishwasher if you wash it within 24 hours. So that's fine. As long as you don't bake it, you can get it off. It's really the, and you do it reasonably soon. Um, i still got resin on the outside of that, but it's not on the inside, which is good. Um, so I'm actually going to do a multi-layered jug and use it to pour all four. Eek. I'm really, really pushing myself on this one. Pouring four and trying to make them look like a set. My interesting point of view is that as long as they've all got the same colours in them, no matter what they end up looking like, they're the same shape and the same colours, they're a set. So, I am going to put silicon into the blue and the red, not the white or the black. Uh, and in the past when I have done these, um, as much as it says that once you've baked them, they are dishwasher safe. Uh, after using, and I did a video, I don't know, around about Christmas time, I think, um, of you know, recapping all the previous pours I've done that I still had and how they'd survived. And they do start to break down. But only the ones, here's the interesting bit, only the ones I put silicon in. But I put mine through the dishwasher. I am I use them every day through the dishwasher. And these guys are going to have these as their beauty cups in their travel van, in their motorhome. So, uh... I'm good with that. They'll only be hand washing. They don't have a dishwasher in there. And they've promised I need to hand wash. And I have warned them. So that's totally fine by me. I'm happy to go ahead and do that. I haven't sold any of the other mugs. Just because I didn't know what they would do over time. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, each of these little pots is, from memory, 45 mils or one and a half, yep, one and a half fluid ounces. So I am going to stir those in so that we've got silicon all through all the blue and all the red. Now, I do also want to point out this ruby red was so insistently pink pink red that because rubies are that color um that i have added a couple of drops of the blue into the red and stirred it already um purely because i wanted to try once it hits the white try not to have too much of a um what's that thing called pink <laughs> all right so let's get to layering into the jug um how can i do this so that you guys can see it let's do it like this i've got the camera on the side there no that's too high not gonna work um i've got the camera on the side there just so that you can see it as I'm pouring around, um, watching that go. So I just want to sh also show you the consistency of this stuff. This is, oh, hold on, oops, where are you? There you are. This is straight out of the pot, all right? And that's how I'm going to use it. Uh, so it is going to be... A bit of time in my layering process. Bloop. But that is because I want to get... I'm only going to do tiny little bits of black. Not much at all. I 
I'm after multicolors. Multi layers. Probably could bring this up. Come on, black. There you go. Can I get this to closer to you? This is not avid viewing, is it? What else could I put under there? Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, so a little bit closer. Sorry about this, guys. Blue, red, white. Now, there will be a link in the description if you want to find this Pabo paint to find it on Amazon. Um, and there will also be a link to a article about whether or not this stuff is food safe. Um, the way Paybo advertise it, Pebo, Paybo, however they say their name, um, is not to use it where food will be. And the, the reason for that is not that it's not food safe. It is a non-toxic paint. It is totally fine, totally safe. Um, the reason for that warning is that um, if they... If you use it where you're going to be stirring your cup or um, using your knife and fork, the paint is not indestructible, okay? It is, it will chip, it will get cut. And bits of paint will come off leaving behind it little areas where um, bacteria can grow. So what they're actually protecting you from is the bacteria that can grow under the chipped paint rather than the, any toxicity of the paint itself. Okay, so please don't have a hissy fit at me in the comments like happened in the past. Because <laughs> I've done my research, okay? Now this stuff is hand wash safe after... I think it's 72 hours from recall. Um, and if you bake it, it is dishwasher safe. And go back through my videos, I've done tests, it works. I use my mugs every day. It works. Um, and I'm using these entire containers. Because I have found in the past each mug takes about... 30 mils so that's basically all of the white all of the blue all of the red um, so 
I am going to be doing some very careful <laughs> mediating of what have we got? We've got about a hundred and mm, probably a hundred and fifteen milliliters in there. So one of the things that you need to be very aware of when you're pouring is um, that the whole mug gets covered. And I'm just going to go around once on each mug to start with. And let them drain. Okay. They're quite dark, aren't they? Where's all my white gone? I think the white sunk to the bottom. My target with this first pour is to make sure they've all got paint on them. And you'll notice I'm not using the Lazy Susan right now. Starting to find a bit of white down the bottom. That is a good sign. <laughs> and these paints do dry translucent. So some of the white from... from the mag will show through. All right. So the next step, as much as I love the drips that I'm getting, <laughs> I have used um, we used about 70 mils so I've got enough to paint to go around again but the important piece that I need to do first is to pick up these drips and get them to cover all the whole mug all right And then when I go around for the second time, that ugly stuff will get pushed off the bottom. As you can see, I've got some areas where the viscosity of the paint has just had it run down in one spot. I 
it's really important to get if you're going for a full coverage look to get full coverage it's a bit like putting on your foundation ladies if you're gonna wear it wear it properly <laughs> that's my point of view anyway Don't just put it on half your face. Now some of you are going, oh, I like it just half poured like that. That looks really cool. Yes, so do I. But that's not the look she asked for. So what I might do, so that I don't bore you all with this part of the process, is pause the video and come back once I've got this all done on all four bit mugs. Alright, so I'll be back. Okay. Okay, okay, I done it. I got them. I got them there, I think. Oops, missed a bit. Some of them were being a bit obstinate. Some of them wanted to cuddle each other. We had a bit of fun, didn't we, mugs? Alright. Problem with choosing to keep the handles clean. Handles are a real pain to paint. But the problem with trying to keep them clean is you've then got to try and keep them clean. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to move some of these off to the side. Just so that I can spin them with a little more ease. Okay. So... I'm going to pour this way and then spin it towards you. just want to show you the most amazing thing on the top of this cup. Look at this. That is cool. All right. No, don't do that. That is not a good plan. Who gave you permission to fall over, huh? Not me. I did not give you permission. Okay. I'm just going to pick that big blob there up and... Add it to the waterfall that's happening over there. And this is very, very dark. I'm a little bit concerned about that. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Bring in number two. It is definitely... Michelle, what are you doing? These colours have mixed so dynamically in the cup. I'm a little concerned about what this is going to end up looking like.
We're getting some lighter colouring coming through, but I'm missing my reds. Maybe I shouldn't have mixed those, that little bit of blue in. Oh, here we go, here we go. Got some funky colours happening in that one. Stay on the cup. Stop it. We are getting some stuff happening. I'm going to go back to this one now that we've got some light coming through. And try and have that. On that one as well. Here we go. Look at that. That is stunning. Ooh, I like it. Well, if she doesn't like them, I'll keep them. <laughs> I'll buy the cups off her. Layers and layers and layers happening here, guys. There's still a little bit left in the pot. And I'm just going to make sure. Where did that go? That. Those down there.
Oh, I almost don't want to torch some of these so that they are just delicious as they are. Look at this. Look at the colours in that one. I love it. That is stunning. Let me bring it up for you. I can't, sorry, it's really hard to get that in the screen for you. I'm loving, loving, loving it. I might stop the video. And <laughs> uh, no, she's commissioned me to do my art. I am going to choose. And as I said, I like them so much that if she doesn't, that's actually okay. That is very bright white. I'm thinking I might. Just take some of this darker. And dribble. Dribble something through it. <laughs> I'm loving it. These look so cool. And I'm seeing air bubbles in them, which tells me I do need to torch them. Oh, take a deep breath, Michelle. Just going to take you around for another spin. Look at those. I really love that. I don't want to torch that one. <laughs> and this is the one that I put some more colour through because it was so light. All right. What I'm actually going to do now, because I'm going to have to pick these up, is I'm actually going to put gloves on over top of my paint covered hands. So that I can have a little bit less dirty hands. Because I'm going to pick them up this way. And just as if it was a canvas, we're going to... Run the torch over it, popping any air bubbles and bringing up some cells. There's a mass of cells in there. Look at that. Next. Move this round so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just keeping the flame off the paint, popping any air bubbles, and just warming the paint so that any silicon 
pops up. So there you go. Got some cells on that one as well. Look how these cells are developing, guys. And then they start to run. I love it when they run. It's really important with this stuff not to have air bubbles in it. It's not too bad. Oh, I've got paint on those already. How did I do that? So let's bring them around again to show you how those cells are starting to develop. I really like this side of this one. This looks really cool. This one's funky. They look like jellyfish all floating to the top. <laughs> So, really, that is all I can do to those right now. I'm just going to move them off the, um, off the platter and uh, pop you guys up here, up, up top, so that we can have a play down the bottom. So let's move. Off you go. You go sit over there and develop. Because there's a lot of paint left. Just put my finger on that one. Oh my gosh, look, the red's coming out. Oh, it's there. It's coming through. Oh, oh, that's so exciting. It's happening on the others as well. Look at this. Oh, we're getting some red. It did stay. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. All right. I will be showing you what these end up like at the end, so don't worry about that. We're going to go and play in what's in here because that is looking exciting. All right, so here we are. <laughs> and I'm just going to take you around and show you what we've got in the drip off. This piece here is just gorgeous. I love it. And this piece down here too, that is very funky. Um, so there's lots of bits that I want to dip. And I'm also going to show you what's inside the cup still. So I got the amount of paint about right for getting onto the cups. Um, I would probably not do it all in one big pour like this again. I love this area here. This looks so cool. Um, now 
Now this is on a silicon sheet. So what I don't dip, I am going to leave. So if anybody um, wants it, you're more than welcome to sing out and say, I want what's left. But let's have a look what's in the cup. Check this out. Look at that. It looks like a... Um, Looks like a geode. It looks like a um, waves on a beach. It looks like the inside of a shell. Oh, it's just stunning. How does it get any better than that? Okay, so maybe I should make you wait till another video to do this. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, uh. Why do I do that? Yes, I would done it before now what do we got? we got we need some bits to dip what bits do I want to dip is the question where are all my bits to dip I've got squares I've got rectangles I've got ovals I've got circles. And I've got little teardrops and love hearts even. So let's see what wants to be painted on today. Dum, 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 dum. My first piece is going to be this one down here. It's so pretty. And I'm going to put fresh blue tack on my stick because last time it was getting a little bit non-sticky. Have you ever found that? If you overuse blue tack, it loses its stickiness. So what am I talking about? Here's my stick. Here's my hunk of blue tack. I've got a link in the description if you want to have me talk you through this whole process a little bit more dynamically. Then we've got a cabochon, which is flat on the one side and rounded on the other, but like a magnifying glass. And so you put your blue tack on the rounded side and the paint on the flat side. And you get to see whatever it is that you're dipping. Look at that. I've literally picked up exactly what was on showing up on the ground. Sorry, I can't find it difficult to angle it right. I will show you all of these as well once they are dry at the end of this video. So, next please. Oh, wow. Now, what's been left behind almost looks like a portrait. You've got the hair and the shawl and then the face shape, but it's a dog face shape rather than a human face shape. And then you've got the light coming down from heaven at the top. That's so pretty. I'm going to leave that bit. Uh, I do, though like this piece here and I'm going to grab that on a circle and 
always polish up your flat side make sure there's no left dirty fingerprints Now with this stuff being porcelain paint, it does go hard and unable to be peeled off even without baking it. So if you decide you don't like it, you need to get it off. And you need to also clean it up um, pretty quickly once it's dried now yeah. I really like this piece here I'm not sure if I'm game enough to capture it though got an air bubble don't really have a big enough piece to capture it Maybe I'll go for another oval. Because it's so big and the ovals are the biggest ones I've got. Sorry about the glare. Not sure about that one. We'll have to wait and see once it's dry. But I am going to. Sorry. Just torch it. Look at all those cells. Tiny, 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 tiny cells. But they're spreading. Gonna come back to that one. There's that first piece that I showed you. I love it. Um, I think I might put that one on a square actually. Kind of looks like a spiral core on there. That's funky. This is so pretty. Let's go back to those cells. Look how they much they've spread. <laughs> And I might do a love heart on those ones. How's that? That's cool. What's that black bit in the middle there? I don't know. We'll see if it survives. And one more I'm going to do is through this area here, I'm going to do a long skinny one. Okay, that looks like a galaxy in there. 
That's cool. Um, and I'm going to go for an oval in the pot. Let me find a way to get you to see inside the pot. There we go. I'm going to go with an oval just because it needs to be big. That looks awesome. Come on. Focus. Look at that. That is stunning. That might be one I keep for myself, actually. All right. So I am going to leave the rest of it just sit here. Um, usually it only takes about 12 hours for this paint to set up, even on cold days. Um, so we've got our cabochon sitting there. Um, I'm going to take this piece of paper away so that it doesn't accidentally fall on anything. And then our mugs. They're all doing their funky thing over there. Looking fabulous. And I'll be back once these are dry. So in three, two, one. So welcome forward. <laughs> um, it's now uh, the next day. These have dried enough to be able to pick them up and handle them. And it's time to clean up any bits that I don't desire to be in the finished product and um, as you can see just with my nail I can scratch those little bits off it is a matter of being very aware of where the bits that you want to keep are and staying very present with that the other thing to be aware of is these lumps can you see that now if you're wanting your cup to sit flat you're gonna need to trim those off okay and while it's still a little bit soft it's a great time to do that um, so I'm just gonna scoot around and you know when you see handcrafted um, pottery, they always have a ring where they've cleaned the glaze off to sit them into the kiln. And that means that they're not going to have this problem, unfortunately, because we pour on a liquid and let it drip off the bottom we have to do this but that's what they do too they they get a, a wet cloth and wipe it off so I'm gonna go around and clean all of these up um, and then come back and show you the end result all right, so I'll be back shortly. All right, so let's have a look at these beauties. They are all cleaned up and signed. Um, I am so pleased with these. Look at this. Look at how much pink came through on them. I was so surprised when that happened. Um, I... It, I thought we'd lost the red and um, 
as the cells grew, especially up near the rim, we got that pink red coming through. So I'm super, super pleased about that. But look at these. I just love the way these kind of reminds me of a waterfall. That one looks like a tooth. <laughs> um, there's ones that look like ghosts. There's ones that look like um, jellyfish. Look at this. Um, this bit here. It's just cell upon cell upon cell. It's like um, almost looks like it's one of those caterpillars that's then just sunk. Um, there's one of the ones that looks like a jellyfish. So there's that one. And then we've got this one. This one's got less cells, but it's still got some of that real yummy texture that I like. It's so cool. Again, that pink came up at the top. I am super pleased with these. Super pleased indeed. Alright. This one's probably the pinkest of the lot. <laughs> again I really like it this one's got lots and lots and lots of smaller cells through here that have then dribbled I just love them it's so pretty and I love this patch here look at it just ah yum 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 This one was super busy in here with lots and lots of cells that then stretched but it gives it that texture and I think you'll agree with me when I say these definitely look like a set but you can still tell they're all individual handcrafted hand painted artist pieces so I'm really pleased with the result I'm sh not sure I'm a little bit of a white streak down here but I'm okay with that um, I'm not sure if I would choose to do a set of four again in the same way as I've done them this time um, I'm very happy with them but it was quite stressful making sure that they <laughs> all came through okay <laughs> so now let's have a look at what happened with the pendants because we did quite a few um, cabochons and I can't remember what order we did them in so I'm just gonna this one actually I can remember the order of this one this one's the last one I did and I did it off camera Eep. sorry bank as I went to tip out the paint that was in the jug it just did this cool, cool thing. And I had to try and capture it. It didn't quite capture it perfectly, but it definitely resulted in a very three-dimensional um, cabochon, which I really like. Really like that one. I actually think I really like all of them. <laughs> so sticking with the same shape, We've got this one. Now this one's a bit blurry. It does have like a cell-like sort of structure, but it's, it is a bit blurry. Um, but it's very yummy. I think it's just the colour that I like. <laughs> Let's go round this time. This one's got that funky, funky drip pattern. I love that drip pattern see if we can get it so that it's got no reflection round ones are notoriously hard to photograph because they pick up everything but 
but it's quite cool let's go love heart next this one's got lots of cool cells in it and then it's like there's a I don't know what that black thing is it's not got a lump underneath like there's no place where something was stuck there so um I really don't know where that black bit came from it's like a, a hole in the universe or something um it's so weird but it's quite cool <laughs> I like the cells in that and these have um like a a tail behind them they look like they're moving like there's a, a whooshing you can almost hear a whooshing noise coming from that movement it's um and all three of these have that it's like they're escaping from the bunch dun, 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 dun. <laughs> And this one, oh, I like it a lot. Look at that. All the pinks come through to make a purple. Oh, yummy. Yummy, yummy. And then we're on to our ovals. I'm going to leave the best till last. My point of view of the best till last anyway. This one really does look to me like a pile of shells. I don't know if you can see it, but so sort of like the open ends of shells there and then a, the curly, you know one of those long curly ones? Anyway, I like this. It's got lots of interest, lots of detail. This cell here is funky. Um, I think I would probably, I was wearing it, wear it that way. And then it looks like um. A fountain with all its little little bowls for the water to fill up and then tip out. Do you know what I mean? Like they have at um, water parks. Um, then we've got this one. This is busy. I like the colours, but it's very busy and it's in a interesting way. But it does look like an aeroplane flying over that's what it sounds like no um it does look like a piece of stone i like it it's cool and last but not least this is my favorite it is not for sale this one is staying with me look at that that I get it's it's just stunning that's the one that I got out of the pot when the pot was still flat if you remember um, kind of looks like a, a beach and I don't know that looks like a rose it just you could wear it up that way but it's the streaky bits on the See, it, it, it gives it a texture. Look at that. Ah, just stunning. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. That's going in the Mickey pile. <laughs> all right, guys. So there we have all the pendants. If you want to claim them, I'm going to call them, that one's not for sale, but we're going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, alright, if that gives you a way to identify them, if you want to claim them, before I even get them up on Facebook. Um, these mugs, as I said, are already sold, they are, um, they are a commission, so those are not for sale, um, but yes, these seven pen cabochons I can make them into pendants for you um, and I, let me show you what they look like in pendants because oh crikey droppage it's a good job they're glass let's pop that into there check it out isn't it pretty I think it is I think that's so pretty 
Um, so they come up lovely. This is, I'm still working on the getting the real silver backs, but um, so these are still the ones that you buy off Amazon or AliExpress. You can check out the link in the description to find out how to buy those. And if you use the link in the description to buy them, I'd be really grateful because I get like 4% and it costs you no more. Anyway, that is it from me today. Um, if you would like to join me live on my live ones, sign up on my newsletter. That's pretty much all you get. There's no selling your details or anything silly. Um, but if you sign up here, you'll get 24 hours notification of when I go live and um, check the links in the description we've got the fa acrylic pouring for fun Facebook group um, there's my Facebook page for Mickey art which is where I put the cabochons up um, for sale I've got some more going up soon and um, I am Possibly going to have a staff member that can load my paint, like finish my paintings and load them on the website for sale. <laughs> Coming soon. Cross fingers for that one. That, um, that's a possibility. So what else is possible, guys? What are you choosing? What are you asking for in life? And um, all the points of view you have that stop you from receiving it, will you destroy and create those, please? I adore you all. How much more fun can you have? And I will see you super, 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 super soon. Bye-bye.